praises, all praises, all praises to the heavenly creator of all the universe, infinity, eternity, the stars, the earth, the oceans, the seas, the mountains, all creeping things, humanity, and all there is. This is revelations.unveil.detroit. Back at you, family, in humble, in honor, in privilege, in pleasure to be before you to speak and to share and to be involved and to hear the word of the holy power creator. And it is always wonderful to prepare the den and to light the logs and to clear the carpet and spread the pillows so that we may come in and be comfortable and release the carnal skulls for the exposure of the cranial universes and to open up the chests to expose the spirit so that we may get the fire and the heat of the truth of the holiness of all. All praises, family. And to the scattered tribes, wherever you may be on earth, continue petition and care in prayer for your safety and security. And for my brothers and sisters who I refer to as pending Israelites, the melanated and Moors, the original men and children of God, the sojourners and sovereigns, the copper colored, the colored and people of color, the indigenous and aboriginals, the natives, Negroes and niggas, the Afro African Americans and blacks, the descendants of slaves, and those conquered and colonized. We are here, family, to continue our understanding of the law and the covenant. Mandatory that we understand the covenant rules as we reconcile ourselves back to our true positions on planet earth as the children of the most high holy power creator whom he delivered out of the land of G uh, Egypt with a mighty hand and redeemed us from bondsmanship, slavery, captivity from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And so we are continuing with the law. And so I will preface us beginning with a brother, a wonderful brother of mine in the spirit asked me as we were discussing a presentation of four time. <laughs> and he asked me, do you read the old New Testament? And of course, when he asked me that is like 50 question marks popped on my face. Like, do I read the Old Testament? Uh, yes, sir. So uh, maybe he has not visited some of the presentations, but OK, he has provoked me, uh, quote unquote, to give a nice dispensation of the New Testament which all ties in together. So I'm not sure if he thinks the old or the New Testament is distinct or different from the Old Testament. I'm not sure if there is an examination of the apocryphal text um, when he thought of the question, but doesn't matter. We are going to get it all or a nice, nice cut of a fine piece of spiritual meat 
and a nice sip of the finest grape of the spiritual vine so that we can chew and enjoy the libation as we fill our soul with increasing righteousness. All praises. And as the standard, we begin here at revelations.unveil.detroit in the book of Malachi, chapter three, verse six. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Followed by our second fortifying standard in the book of Hebrews chapter eight in reference to the Messiah, the Redeemer, the Savior, the King of Israel, whom the world refers to as Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. And then, of course, we get to our brother, holy prophet, Isaiah, who tells us, informs us how to receive and read the holy word. Isaiah chapter 28, verses 9 through 11. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. All right. So now that we are warmed up, we're getting right into the law. And we will begin this presentation in the New Testament. The book of John chapter five, verse one. After this, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in Hebrew, Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season in the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity 30 and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, will you be made whole? Verse seven, the impotent man answered him, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus said unto him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that were cured, it is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful 
for you to carry your bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up your bed and walk. Then asked them of him, What man is that which said unto you, Take up your bed and walk? And he that was healed wist not who it was. For Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Verse 14. Afterward, Jesus find himself in the temple and said unto them. Verse 14. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, you are made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Verse 19, then answered Jesus and said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do. For what things soever he does, these also do the son Likewise, for the father loveth the son and shows him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. For as the father raised up the dead and quickens them, even so the son quickens whom he will. For the father judges no man, but has committed all judgment unto the son, that all men should honor the son, even as they honor the father. He that honoreth not the son, honoreth not the father which has sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hears my word and believes on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the son of God and they that hear shall live. For as the father has life in himself, so has he given to the son to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the son of man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth, and, verse 29, and shall come forth that they have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. I can, 
Verse 30, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnessed of me is true. You sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth, but I receive not testimony from man. But these things I say that you might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light, and you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father has given me to finish, the same works that I do, bear witness to me that the Father has sent me. Verse 36, but I have greater witness than that of John for the works which I, verse 36, but I have greater witness than that of John for the works which the Father has given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. And the Father himself, which has sent me, has borne witness of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And you have not his word abiding in you, for whom he has sent him you believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they that are they which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that you have not the love of God in you. I am come in my father's name and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, then you will receive him. How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Do not think I will accuse you to my father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust. For if you have believed Moses, you will believe me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? Uh, family, that was the Messiah, the Redeemer, the Savior and the king of Israel letting us know. Do not think, this is verse 45, do not think that I will accuse you to the father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses in whom you trust. For if you had believed Moses, you would have believed me for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe me? We're going back to the law family. Exodus chapter 22, verse one. If a man shall steal an ox or a sheep and kill it, or sell it, he shall restore five oxes for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. If a thief be found breaking up 
and be smitten that he die, there shall be no blood shed for him. If the sun be risen upon him, there shall be blood shed for him, for he should make full restitution. If he has nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. If the theft be certainly found in his hand alive, whether it be an ox or a horse, an ass or sheep, he shall restore double. If a man shall cause a field or vineyard to be eaten and shall put in his beast and shall feed in another man's field of the best of his own field and of the best of his own vineyard, shall he make restitution. Verse six, if fire break out and catch in thorns so that the stacks of corn or the standing corn or the field be consumed therewith, he that kindled the fire shall surely make restitution. If a man shall deliver unto his neighbor money or stuff to keep and it be stolen out of the man's house, if the thief be found, let him pay double. If the thief be not found, then the master of the house shall be brought unto the judges to see whether he have put his hand unto his neighbor's good. goods. Verse 9, for all manner of trespass, whether it be for ox, for horse, for ass, for sheep, for raiment, or for any manner of lost thing, which another challenges to be his, the cause of both parties shall come before the judges, and whom the judges shall condemn, he shall pay double unto his neighbor. If a man deliver unto his neighbor an ass, a horse, or an ox, or a sheep, or any beast to keep, and it die, or be hurt, or driven away, no man seeing it, then shall an oath of the Lord be between them both, that he has not put his hand into his neighbor's goods, and the owner of it shall accept thereof, and he shall not make it good. And if it be stolen from him, he shall make restitution unto the owner thereof. If it be torn to pieces, then let him bring it for witness, and he shall not make good that which was torn. If a man borrow aught of his neighbor, and it be hurt or die, the owner thereof being not with it, he shall surely make it good. But if the owner thereof be with it, he shall not make it good. If it be a higher thing, it came for his hire. If a man entice a maid that is not engaged and lies with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. If her father utterly refuses to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Verse 19, whosoever lies with a beast shall surely be put to death. He that sacrifices unto any God except to the Lord only, he shall utterly be destroyed. Thou shalt neither vex a stranger nor oppress him, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. If you afflict them in any wise and they cry at all unto me, I will surely hear their cry. And my wrath shall wax hot and I will kill you with the sword and your wives shall be widows and your children fatherless. If you lend money to any of my people that is poor by you, you shall not be to him a usurer, neither shall you lay upon him usury. 
If you at all take your neighbor's raiment to pledge, you shall deliver it unto him by the sun going down. For it is his covering only. It is his raiment for his skin. Wherein shall he sleep? And it shall come to pass when he cries unto me that I will hear, for I am gracious. You shall not revile the gods nor curse the ruler of your people. You shall not delay to offer the first of your ripe fruits and of your liquors, the first of your sons shall you give unto me. Likewise shall you do with your ox and with your sheep. Seven days it shall be with his dam. On the eighth day you shall give it to me. Verse 31. And you shall be holy men unto me. Neither shall you eat any flesh that is torn of beast in the field. You shall cast it to the dogs. All right, family. We got the word from the word of the holy power of all made flesh, the Messiah himself. If you believe not Moses, you can't believe him. You just got 31 verses of Exodus chapter 22 of the law. Put that with the last episode. Let's grow it. It's been stated. Go to the chapters and read it and do it. All praises. And we are doing these presentations because in the book of Deuteronomy, Chapter seven, verse six, it lets us know who we are. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter seven, verses six through nine. For we are a holy people unto the Lord, our God. The Lord, our God has chosen us to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon us, nor choose us because we were more in number than any people, because we were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved us, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, has the Lord brought us out with a mighty hand and redeemed us out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord our God, he is God. The faithful God, which keeps covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments unto a thousand generations. Oh, yes, that is us. That is we. We are the children of Israel. Israel in the United States of America, the exiled descendants of the holy people of the Bible. Get it right, get it straight. That is what it is. That is what it will be unto eternity. Oh yes, and all praises and family as you gather your wares as we glare with our departing stares, as we embrace each other in hugs and love, as we begin to sojourn again on planet Earth, we 
continue to define and refine our walks on the path of righteousness given to us as an example by the Holy Messiah, the Redeemer, the Savior, the King of Israel, whom the world refers to as Jesus Christ, who is the word of the holy power creator of eternity made flesh. The same word written on tables of stone by the holy power creator's own finger and given to brother prophet Moses to deliver to the congregation, the church of the nation of Israel as a holy covenant to observe and to do so that we may be deemed worthy for entrance into the 12 gates of the kingdom of heaven on earth. Let it be done. So be it. In my continued petition of care in prayer for the scattered tribes all over the planet earth, wherever you may be, and to my brothers and sisters in the carnal mind, the pending Israelites, I pray for our peace and our harmony as we endure and persevere so that we may overcome upon the arrival of the Messiah and the King. All praises. This is Revelations dot unveiled dot Detroit. Until we are together again, family, I love you. Detroit. I love you to all. I love you. And to the scattered tribes, here is your promise of comfort. Book of John, chapter three, verses 14 through 17 into Isaiah chapter 45, verse 17. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Isaiah 45, 17, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end.